Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video I'm going to be painting a big tutorial on how to paint loads and loads and loads of different hair colours and hairstyles. So I'm going to show you how I paint hair and we're going to paint these in loads of different hair uh, colours. So this is a uh, great request that I've had recently um, after such positive positive feedback on my skin tutorials. Um, it seems like people want to know a lot more about different painting styles and different tutorials on how to do uh, sort of not so much simple things but normal everyday things for their models so we're going to do uh, hair and i'm going to make a really big painting uh, video with about 10 different hair colors so we're going to start and i'm going to use just Vallejo on this one and we're going to make a nice bright orange hairstyle so we're going to start with an orange brown and that's all we're going to do is just going to base all of the hair area of this model using this orange brown Orange brown is a great base colour when you paint in orange colours because it does have a darker brown sort of tinge to it but it does also retain and hold quite a bit of its really nice sort of uh, vibrant orange tone as well. This gives it the perfect opportunity for something that you can boost and build up in a very very easy manner. Now for this one I'm going to be using soft tone and in all of the videos, uh, in all of the different hair colours, I'm going to use uh, army painter washes. That doesn't mean that you've got to use the army painter washes, you can use citadel washes or Vallejo washes or anything like that if you like. I'm just going to use the same types of washes on all of the models so that it makes them all nice and easy. Now from there I'm going to mix a half and half, so 50-50 of orange fire into the base color of the brown orange or the orange brown um, and this is going to give us the first simple little um, sort of vibrant boost then so this is going to give us the first highlight to the model so we've used our base color and by putting that soft tone on that soft tone is dried into the recessed points of the hair now the reason why i'm going to show you this as a big tutorial is because with hair a lot of people get um, sort of drawn into wanting to dry brush hair all of the time and you can dry brush hair and that's absolutely fine but the whole idea of this tutorial is to level up is to build up that that painting technique and to build your confidence with painting as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint using the very tip of my brush I'm gonna paint each strand or some of the strands in separately and that doesn't mean you have gotta be really accurate or really precise because each brush stroke will make each uh, will sort of look like each hair strand or hair um, sort of strand on the model anyway. Now once we've done the first base we're then going to use just the orange fire on its own which is a nice light highlight and as you can see like I was just saying using the very tip of the brush now we're just going to start to pick out the raised areas and we're going to start to pick out all of those different hair strands. Now again like I say most people would think you've got to dry brush hair but you don't actually have to dry brush hair. The idea of leveling up your hair is about picking out all of those little details individually and again like I say you don't have to be too precise you don't have to be too uh, over cautious and careful because where the wash has dried into those recess points it kind of done a lot of the work for you because this is allowing you then just to paint the higher up areas the raised areas and you're always uh, you're automatically getting that um, tone that contrast between the light and dark and as you build those layers up this this color and this vibrancy then really starts to pop and really starts to show through now once we've done that, I'm just going to move on to use a bright orange for this one now. And this is going to be uh, the really sort of vibrant highlight just across the edge. So we're going to be a little bit more sparing with this one. We're not going to paint just as much of this one. We're going to paint this in a very controlled sort of pattern. We're just going to pick out the very, very tips and the very, very raised areas of the hair. And as you can see, that contrast now on the orange is really, really nice. It goes down from a sort of browny sort of tone, this orange brown tone and it raises itself up on those raised areas and it, it highlights itself up on those raised areas to give us this, this sort of multi-tone color, this sort of multi-orange uh, and orange-brown sort of tone, which is a really, really nice, cool, simple effect to do. So like I say, instead of dry brushing our hair, we're just gonna level our hair up by just painting these straps. And there you go, that is the bright orange hair all complete and it looks really really awesome looks really really nice and bright and vibrant and we've got this really cool uh, effect where this bright color is, is 
really pop in and we've got this sort of dark dark shadow in the recess points as well fantastic so that was part one we're going to move on to part two we're going to use ak interactive to make a yellow blonde color so we're going to start with an ochre color for this one and this is going to be our nice sort of yellow base tone um, you might recognize this color from when i did the horse tutorial and this always offers a really great sort of base yellow color that we can build up from later now as you'll notice with this I'm going to use the same sort of techniques right the way through this video and I know there's a lot of different colors involved so I am going to be making sure that there are timestamps throughout so you can pick and choose which colors you would prefer so as I say we're just going to build up this AK interactive color just across uh, all of the hair here and once that's done then we're going to move into using the soft tone so the soft tone again just using a very very light light brown color and you can already see that this is having such a big effect in all of those recesses picking out all of the details already just by adding a small amount of this wash i tend to use a lot of brown washes when i'm using a lot of sort of earthy tones so this being sort of an ochre sort of a, an, an earthy sort of yellow uh, this matches and suits the brown tone really really well so once that shade is dry, we're going to move into just rebuilding that ochre colour. So just using, again, the very tip of the brush. So using this size zero brush that I've got. And we're just using the very, very tip of the brush, just trying to be uh, careful not to paint into the recess points into the area where the hair looks darker. Um, but we don't have to be too precise with this. Like I was saying earlier, um, this is something that we are going to build up and progress through in a really, really nice sort of easy manner. Um, something that is really really useful to know as well with this is again with the brush strokes because we're using that very tip of the brush and as I've said to you previously when I'm painting with the, uh, the very tip of the brush some of these brush strokes add to that illusion of depth and add to that sort of contrast and things like that so all of these different brush strokes are going to make it look like there's a lot of different individual hair strands and this is what leveling up the hair is all about because instead of dry brushing it and it being rough and ready and things like that we're just going to build it up into a really nice smooth smooth transition so from there I'm going to use uh, half and half so again with the ochre but I'm now mixing in uh, half of the light earth color as well and this is a really nice sort of um, earthy tone this is a really great uh, standard sort of earth color has a sort of creamy sort of texture to it so it lends itself really really well to things like uh, blonde colors and again using that very tip of the brush as you can see I'm just starting to bring up that that vibrance and that contrast as you can see now you can be as specific as you like uh, when it comes to this you don't have to paint all of those hair strands again you can be quite selective as to where you want the highlighting to be and you can really sort of play about with how you want the hair to highlight on which areas you'd like to stand out more so that gives this a really cool interesting technique and a really fun way of painting as well because it is very individual and very unique to each different painter so as I say, the reason why I wanted to build this sort of uh, video was to just give you guys a really interesting and different look as to how to build up loads of different colours. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a real fun little project for me. So once we've done the first step up, we're just going to use the light earth on its own and we're going to do the same thing again. But again, just being a little bit more selective again, as you can see, I'm just trying to sketch out these, these very, very, very edges of the hair strands now. And you can really see that vibrance now going from that sort of brownish yellow sort of wash that we've used uh, coming up now through to these really sort of lighter highlighted points on the very tips and on the very edges of the hair and it's really starting to make the hair look uh, very very unique very individual and a much more contrasting style and now I know I keep going back to the dry brushing, but you can really see the effect that it has by painting the hair in this way. I say to people quite often that when you're painting, when you paint something like this and you've really spent a bit of time into it and you can see the time and effort you've put in, it's quite rewarding in its own way because when you look back on the models, they always look that that much cooler and that much more vibrant and there you go that is the yellow blonde all done. So again using the same techniques, how quick and simple and easy was that? It looks great. So we're going to move on to the army painter now for paint uh, for part three, not for paint three, for part three, and we're going to use a nice light brown. So we're going to start with a leather brown color. This is a really, really great middle of the road brown. So this is a really good one that you can use to base your hair color. So when it comes to painting your fantasy models and things, and you want them to, um, uh, you, you want them to be. Uh, 
like a sort of normal sort of everyday average kind of brown uh, this leather brown is the perfect color for that it's a really really good sort of base tone that we can build up to make lighter colors come from as we go now sticking with the same thing we're going to use that soft tone once again so that army paint the shade and we're just going to cover this all over the model uh, all over the hair again I've got just a little bit too much on my brush here but that's cool because we can always manipulate it and take some out by removing the paint off the brush anyway so not too overly worried about that and again we're also going to build up those colors and tones as we go so we'll not worry about that too much then we're going to move back onto the leather brown once all of that's dry and doing the same thing again using the very tip of our size zero brush we're going to start to pick out all of those hair strands so i'm trying to stick with using similar sort of um, models or the same hair just so that it shows you in multiple different phases how I'm building this hair up and it gives you uh, a really sort of a common sort of middle ground as you can see me sort of building my way through I'm trying to stick with a very uniform and very sort of uh, similar style so that that gives you a nice uh, sort of anchor point like I say it gives you a, a way of, of seeing how I paint these models um, but also sticking with the same sort of technique this is a way of reinforcing that technique and building that technique um, in multiple multiple phases so that we can really see it sort of come into life now once we've done that leather brown again we're going to use a monster brown again from the army painter this is a nice highlighted color to the leather brown and as you can see it already straight away starts to make an impact on top of that leather brown and this is where we're going to start to pick out those streaks and those uh, sort of strands once again and again you can be really sort of um, specific about where you place the, the, the sort of strands and, and how you paint sort of each hair strand and things like that. You could be as careful as you like, you could be as um, sort of, like I say, very specific about where, where you place it. So you could paint just sort of the highlight towards the top so that it looks like you've got a little bit of a, a light source coming from the top to the bottom. Um, but the, the whole idea of doing it in this sort of way is just about building that contrast. So building the difference between uh, the dark stage underneath to the lighter stage at the top. And by doing so, we're just making this a very simple, easy sort of effect. So a very simple technique, which is your base color, your shade, back to your base color and then possibly two highlights maybe three depending on how far you want to push that highlight so it's just about making it nice and easy but also pushing and, and advancing our painting technique as well so for the next stage I'm going to use the monster brown but I'm also going to add uh, a half and half so again we're using one blob of each but I'm going to use skeleton bone with this one that again is um, another sort of creamy sort of color which is a really good color to use as highlights you'll notice when I paint a lot I tend to use the sort of creamy colors rather than whites whites on times when you use to highlight they will wash out your colors so it makes your colors too white or, or too washed out whereas when you use a cream that sort of enhances a lot of earth tones so when you are a um, sort of when you're using a color to highlight your browns using a sort of earthy creamy tone rather than a white will push your brown a little bit further so it will highlight your brown but you won't lose the sort of brown tone and the texture as well and that's perfect when you're painting this sort of uh, thing like hair and, and earth colors on things like shields or leathers and things like that so that is part three that is your light brown that is as simple as that and you see how great this brown hair looks it looks really really cool and it would suit a lot of different fantasy miniatures nice and simple so part four we're going to do another brown but this time I'm going to use scale 75 and we're going to use a chestnut sort of color for this one so we're going to start with a Bosch chestnut for the base colors and you can already see the big difference between this one to the previous brown this one is a much more sort of uh, ready sort of brown you can already see that there's a lot more sort of color into this brown it's not a flat middle of the road brown whereas this one has that sort of chestnut color and tone to it so we're really going to play on that we're going to build this sort of chestnut uh, and build this color up so that it makes the model slightly different to the last so we're going to stick with the soft tone yet again so just using the army paint a soft tone wash and as you can see I'm just going to place this all over uh, the hair just so that this sits into the recess points and then we will build up all of those raised areas as we've been doing on all of the other hair so the idea is uh, I was asked previously uh, by someone on the channel how do I make all of my models look different and look individual well this is one way of doing it and 
one way of doing it is by painting them in similar sort of hair tones and similar sort of hair colours, but just slightly changing them up and mixing them into slightly different ways so that it makes them all look slightly unique and slightly their own characters and things like that, rather than just putting them all as one hair colour, uh, which would uh, really detract from the fact that you've got loads and loads and loads of individual models in your army. Uh, paint them all different, paint them loads of different hair colours. Uh, the cool thing with hair is you can go nuts, you can just paint any kind of color uh, because there's just so many different colored uh, sort of textures and tones to hair that you can really go wild so once we've dried with that we're going to use the uh, chestnut bosch but we're also going to use a black and brown as well so this is a half and half again this is just one blob of each making everything the same everything as easy as possible when we paint in these models so when we paint in the hair we're just going to try to make everything as easy and uniformed as possible so they all look different but they all have that similar um, technique and that similar style once that's dry, we're going to use the black and brown on its own, and this then is going to be our highlighting layer. And again, you can be very specific about where you place this, and as you can see, I'm just using the tip of the brush again, just to sketch this highlight colour up the hair, just like so, just following the pattern, nice and simple, but you can already see that this colour is really really different and unique to the previous color as I was saying earlier because we've got that sort of chestnut -y sort of tone and we've got a slightly different color tone and there we go you can see now just using the tip of the brush to pick out those details it's a really cool technique and a really cool way of painting like I say it's a good way of leveling up hair because hair can be one of those things that uh, you can look at and think it could be quite simple but again it's one of those parts of a model where if you don't know sort of a nice easy quick technique it can also be quite daunting you know sometimes people don't want to paint each strand of the hair because they're worried about making mistakes or they're worried about what if it doesn't look right and things like that well you don't need to worry about that um, don't need to worry about that we can paint each strand uh, we can be as precise or unprecise as we want the whole idea is as long as we're having fun and as long as we're painting that is all that matters so there you go, that is our chestnut colour. And there we go, look at how cool that colour and that hair looks just across the back. All those different individual strands, the difference in the contrast between the dark to the light, they look really great. So moving on to part five, we're going to do a citadel colour and we're going to use a dark grey colour. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to start with Abaddon Black and we're going to paint this all over the hair like we have done with the previous ones. Now what we're going to do with this is we're going to make a dark grey colour. So um, the idea is that this could be a black hair uh, or a really, really, really sort of dark grey. And the idea is when we paint in blacks normally on miniatures, uh, you don't want to paint just flat black, especially for things like hair. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to kind of mix things together to kind of create a little bit more texture. We're going to go from the uh, the Citadel Abaddon Black and we're going to use the Eshing Grey now to pick out some of those details. Now the other thing to notice when painting with black is because it's already black, we don't need to put a shade into this because everything is already at its base colour. So instead of putting a shade and then building back up, this one's going to be the simplest one because we literally just go into paint everything black, so all the hair is black, and then we're just going to pick out some of those details using very, very thin layers of um, sort of dark grey colours so that that kind of picks out a little bit of the light. The reason why we're doing it this way is because even though you want to paint sort of black hair or grey hair or anything like that, if you take a look at people that do have black hair, your hair isn't always just specifically black. Light will sort of bounce off your hair and you will sort of see tone and texture through the hair. So this is kind of why we put in a little, little bit of color into this, just to kind of break it up a little bit. Now, once we've done the Eshing Grey, I'm going to use Eshing Grey and Dawnstone. Again, using half and half, so this is just one part of each 50-50. And again, just using a nice little thin down uh, paint. And I'm just going to pick out now some of the very, very extreme sort of edges and the very extreme sort of details. And this works well, as I said, for a good sort of dark grey colour. But this would also work if you just wanted to paint something with black hair. But just pick out some of the, the, the subtle sort of highlights just across the... Um, just across sort of the, the, the sort of highlighted top areas and things like that as if you're just picking up with the light sources. Again, a very, very cool, simple technique that looks really, really good when you get used to it. And again, it's something that you can use for blacks like when you're doing black leathers and it will look great. 
and there you go that is the dark gray or black all painted and as you can see it's very simple we've just picked out a few of those details nice and straightforward and there's your first five done so we've got our orange our blonde our light brown our chestnut brown and our dark gray or black and these are great for fantasy these are great for everyday miniatures these are five everyday great colors that you can use when you're painting hair on your models now these are probably the more safe and more normal sort of colors and the more sort of normal tones that you can use and I've stuck to using the same paint for each one for this or the same paint brand for each one now we're gonna move on to the second five and with the second five these are gonna be completely different because I'm gonna mix colors together so for part six we're gonna use a sci-fi bright blue hair and this is gonna be a really really cool one so we're gonna start by using a turquoise color uh, from Vallejo and again we're gonna base the whole hair in this color and as we build this up this is going to have a really cool sort of sci-fi blue kind of look this is really good for um, again your sci-fi games your steampunk games in all of these different kinds of uh, vibrant and, and punk style hair this is going to be a cool one so this is going to be a little bit different to the normal sort of first five that we did so as I say, just covering all of the model in the first original turquoise color nice and simple nice and easy from there, again, sticking with the army painter, we're just going to use a blue tone shade, and this is just going to cover all of that hair, and as you'll see, this is just going to sit in those recess points. The cool thing with blue tone as a shade is it doesn't detract from the original top colour. This is quite a thin shade. Uh, it's not like uh, Drakenhof Nightshade from... Citadel Dragnoff Nightshade is quite a dark blue. This one actually isn't, so this gives you the ability to paint blue into uh, the hair without losing a lot of the color and texture. Once that's dry, we're gonna go back to the turquoise and we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the others. We're just gonna use the tip of the brush and we're gonna to start to build up all of those different hair strands. So we're gonna go back into the model and we're gonna to start to paint all of these different hair strands individually, like we did originally. The difference being now is we paint it with much, much more vibrant sort of colors and the model heads have changed slightly, uh, but you can still see the same technique. You can still see that I'm using the very tip of the brush. Very, I'm being very careful to try to pick out each strand or each part individually um, and it's going to look great. So once that bit is dry, we're going to use Hydra Turquoise from the Army Painter. This is a very similar color, but it is an automatic um, step up so it's almost like half a shade or half a stop up from the original turquoise that we've used this is what makes this then the perfect highlight color to go on top of the turquoise that we were using originally and you can already see that it's starting to boost that blue tone on the hair i'm trying to be as careful as possible painting these hair strands uh, try not to load the brush too much with paint because we are painting hair so we are trying to be as precise as possible uh, but again, as you can see, by building all of these different individual tones, you can really see this colour starting to build, and you can really see that we're starting to get a lot more tone out of this. Now from there, I'm going to use a Scale 75 Herald Blue. If you don't have a Scale 75 and you want to paint this version of hair, that's fine. You can use the Army Painter colour that I used previously, so the Hydra Turquoise, and just mix half and half with a little bit of that bone white into it. And that will give you that really cool sort of um, little vibrant sort of step up. However, if you want to follow me exact and do the exact same sort of pattern, then we're going to use the Herald Blue. And this is a really cool, as you can see, really, really light turquoise texture. And now you can see I'm being very precise using those brush strokes to really pick out all of those different individual strands of hair. And it is starting to look really vibrant and really, really cool. Now again, after this, if you'd like, you can always add a little bit of a cream color, like a bone white color or a skeleton bone color or anything like that. And you can get a little bit more vibrance or a little bit more of a vibrant boost out of this color. I'm not going to boost this one any further. I'm happy uh, keeping this one just as it is. And there you go, that is our nice sci-fi blue color all complete. Again, really nice to see the darker blue in those recess points and that light blue just up on top. Now moving on to part seven, we're gonna use a really nice bright squid pink and we're gonna create a cool looking anime style bright pink hair, which is great for those sci-fi style games or again, even for those steampunk games. This is great for those sort of 
raiders and punks and things in like a Necromunda universe and things like that. So like I say, we're going to start with our squid pink and we're just going to cover all of the hair together uh, just like this in a nice even thin coat, just like so. Just going to try to be careful not to get this over all of the model um, and just be nice and even with the coat in. Now, once we've done that, we're going to use a red tone from the army painter. Again, I'm sticking with the army painter just to keep things nice and uniformed and nice and um, together so that we're using the same company, the same thing, just so that we're not mixing things up too much. And that means it's easy for you guys if you want to collect a few different washes. Uh, this set does come in a great box set with all of these colors in one go. And we're just going to cover all of the hair, all of that pink, using this nice red tone. And again, this is going to sit in those recess points but without darkening down the color too much so this is going to give us a great baseline and a great point where we can boost those colors back up and again using the exact same technique so like i said sticking to doing the same thing all of the way through the videos just so that we can maintain and keep all of these different hairstyles looking quite similar and having the same sort of style we're just going to use that squid pink just to build those base colors back up so again using that very tip of the brush this size zero brush that i've got we're just going to start to paint out all of those different hair, sta hair strands and just paint all of those details back in. Now, like I say, you can see that this isn't a massively difficult technique. It's not something that takes ages to master or anything like that. That's all it takes is a little bit of confidence to know that you are able to use the tip of the brush and you are able to sit down and paint the hair in this sort of fine uh, fashion, in this sort of different sort of style. And you are allowed to have a little bit of character and a little bit of personal control and, and human touch into the model as well. So this is what leveling up the hair is all about it's all about painting with just a little bit of character painting with your own sort of uh, input to it now once the squid pink is done we're going to use uh, the bone white and we're going to mix half and half again so this is just 50 50 so uh, one blob of each paint and again we're just going to pick out some of those highlighted points and we're going to be a little bit more careful as to where we place this now so that this becomes a little bit thinner and then this creates this illusion of uh, highlighting and a nice lighter vibrant layer on top so that we get this this light tone sort of building through uh, the, the lighter parts of the hair as I say, uh, it's always good to paint with a little bit of personal touch as well and having brush strokes and things like that into the miniature do show that you have hand painted the miniature and that it's not all too, you, uh, too faked and too um, manufactured. So painting in this way is a cool little way of making sure that you have a little bit of pride to your models as well. Once that's done, we're just going to use an AK Interactive Pastel Pink, and this is a really, really great, uh, vibrant, sort of light, light colour, and we're going to be extra, extra careful with this one, because with this one, we just want to pick some of the very, very edges. So this is probably the most difficult part, it's just trying to maintain and pick out some of the really extreme details like so without sort of painting all of the um using using too much of the brush or without covering too much of the model with that paint we're just trying our hardest to pick out some of the very 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 raised points so you can see i'm just trying to be as careful as possible to use as little paint as possible just on the very edges and you can see that vibrancy and that lightness coming through at uh, the paint is already starting to make this color really sort of glow and really sort of stand out on the hair as well and there you go that is your anime bright sci-fi pink hair all done and it's looking great the vibrant sort of uh, light light sort of uh, pastel pink really really does make a big good job to this one and there we go, once that one is done, we're going to move on to part 8, and this one is a very vibrant yellow hair. So this one is a uh, very sort of light, light yellow blonde. So we're going to start with one of my favourite colours of all time, which is Avalanche Sunset. This is a Citadel colour, and it has a fantastic coverage. So this yellow is one of those yellows that uh, really does sort of cover onto the miniature in a fantastic, fantastic way. Normally, yellows can be quite thin, whereas this one has a really good base colour to it. Once that's done, we're going to use a light tone for this one. And a light tone is a little bit of a lighter color, as it says on the tub. Um, this one has a little bit of a more orangey sort of tone, which gives the yellow a great sort of orange base uh, sort of shade to it, which is fantastic. 
And once the wash has dried, we're just going to go back to using the Avalon Sunset and we're going to start once again doing the same thing as we've done previously and we're going to pick out all of those different hairs. So we're going to go back to that base colour and we're going to start to paint this back in and again using that little bit of uh, sort of personal touch and sort of using those brush strokes to really sort of paint out all of those different hair strands. We're going to start to create the character and we're going to start to build this back up again in the same way as we have done with the previous models, just using the tip of the brush just to follow those hair strands and just to build that little bit of character as we see it. Now it's important here not to overload the brush as well. This is something that I should have mentioned earlier. We're trying to make sure that we've got a nice thin paint but without overloading the brush too much. Because we paint in a lot of detail, we want plenty of paint on the brush and we want the paint to be nice and thin and smooth so that it takes to the model nice and simply but we don't want too much paint on the brush here just in case that paint comes off and falls into those recess points where the shade has dried down and created our dark spot. From there then I'm just going to use a deep yellow from Vallejo. This is a great highlight colour. Now as I was saying earlier about uh, yellows being quite thin normally, this colour does take two or three coats to really sort of show through its vibrancy. So this one is very much a building colour. So whereas the Avalon Sunset underneath uh, is normally pretty much a one coat or a maybe two coat uh, paint, depending on how you paint, uh, this one then does take a good couple of coats. So this one did take me I think three coats to get the vibrancy to the level that I wanted and again this is something that you can build up slowly over time and just by painting um, in sort of stages you can really start to build that vibrancy and it really does sort of stand off that uh, Avalon Sunset base colour. It's a great um, sort of first stage step up in highlighting uh, all of these sort of yellows because you go from that sort of orangey wash that is sat in those shaded areas to the Avalon Sunset then which is our nice sort of basic colour and then this becomes this really great sort of start in highlight that we can really really work on and get some, some, some nice vibrant colours out of uh, on the next stage as well. So for that next stage, we're just going to use the AK Interactive Pastel Yellow. So you'll notice that I used uh, this color a little bit earlier in one of the other hair um, colors. And we're just going to use this now uh, to build up this really light sort of tone. In the same way, we're going to be as careful as possible with this one because we really don't want this one to take over too much of the color of the hair. This one is very much a final sort of highlight to the hair. And as you can see, it really does create a lot of character with this one because it is very, very, very light. It's very, very uh, bright color, which creates that illusion where the sort of light is catching or, or sort of just about um, ra sitting on those raised, raised areas. So the lighting in is just catching on those really uh, highlighted, most highlighted points. And as you can see, that creates a real great level of character and depth to this one. So this one has probably got one of the, the most extreme sort of contrasts between that sort of orange shade in the darker point, right up to this really light pastel color across the edges. But it really does look fantastic. It does take to the miniature lighter than it looks and it does dry down uh, in a really nice fashion. And all in all, that is your bright yellow there. So that's completely different to the other yellow, the sort of yellow blonde that we did earlier. And as you can see, this one is a lot more sort of cartoon style, which is great for those sci-fi uh, sort of styles. From there, we're going to move on to part nine, which is a light gray color. So we're going to use a sort of blue gray color for this one. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with a Riley gray. This is a great color from Scale 75, which has a really sort of bluish tone to it. You'll recognize this one from other videos that I've used, like when I was painting Mr. X. This has a great sort of bluish tone, which creates this sort of cool, cold sort of gray color. It's a really nice sort of dark tone. From there then I'm going to use Strong Tone. Again, this is an army painter colour, but this one is a much heavier colour. You don't have to use Strong Tone if you don't want. You could use something like uh, Dark Tone as well, which is a black wash, or if you're not using the army painter, you can use uh, any washes you want. Pretty much washes are just there to tone down those colours and to sit into those recess points. The army painter I use purely because, uh, like I say, you can buy them all in one big set. It's easy to use. I find they sit in the, uh, the, the recess points without covering the, the raised areas too much and I think they are great great paints for doing uh, this sort of painting. 
Once that is dry, you can see that this has darkened everything down really, really nicely. And what we're going to do then is just using that Riley Gray, we're going to build that blue gray back up. So you can see that again, I'm just using the tip of the brush and I'm starting to build that tone and texture back into the model, starting to be as careful as possible, picking out all those hair strands. And you can already see the blue tone effect that we are getting back from this. This is a really cool way of building a dark gray. So whereas we used, um, sorry, a light gray. So we're using a dark color to begin, but we're gonna slowly build this up into a nice, nice light blue gray color as well. So previously we'd painted a very dark, dark color using the Citadel colors. This time we're opting for a more colorful gray by using this sort of blue gray color. This color is really gonna to start to stand out once we reach sort of the next one or two layers as well. We're really gonna get a nice sort of uh, lighter sort of tone to it. So I'm gonna use Linardis Gray and Riley Gray. And again, we go in half and half. So this is 50% of each. And the reason for that, as I've said in previous videos, is once you use sort of half and half, so about 50% of each, this becomes a more natural and neutral uh, progression in building the highlights. If you just go straight for the highlight color without sort of mixing these colors together or without mixing your colors together, sometimes it can be too vibrant, too garish, and it stands off the model just that little bit too much. So by mixing these colors in half and half, you just get that sort of halfway point that sort of 0.5 so you kind of get that next step up but without going straight to it so it makes it a little bit more pleasing on the eye it allows your eyes time to adjust to the model and to see those highlights it becomes more natural for you to look at and the the highlight in then of course also looks a lot cooler as you can see, I'm just trying to be as careful as possible picking out all of those different braids as well. So again, using the, the tip of the brush, I'm just using almost like a little stippling motion just to, to tap just a small bit of the color just onto those parts. So we're just gonna use a Ladanis Gray again, uh, but this time we used it on our own because we've done our 50-50 previously. So this time we're just gonna use that uh, color just on its own. And as you can see now, this is really starting to build that vibrancy. You can really see this color starting to show through where we've got that darker points, then the nice uh, blue-gray, cold blue-gray. And this is now gonna create a really nice sort of light blue-gray just across the top for those highlights. This would make a really cool, when I was painting this, seeing the blue-gray tone and the color that we're getting out of this, this would make a really cool cold gray skin tone. Um, so whereas I've had people asking me for more skin tones in another video, um, I will be looking at exploring a lot of different and interesting skin tones that we could use for fantasy miniatures. So like these blue grays and sort of uh, more sort of olive tones and possibly even the red skin tones and things like that that you might see on different kinds of orcs and things like that. Um, so you'll have to let me know what you think, whether you think this would be a cool color for a drow or a dark elf, sort of the skin tone in this with a vibrant white hair. And maybe we'll have a look at building and painting one of those for you. So again, just using the very tip of the brush, as you can see, just picking out as many of those braids as we can and then just following on with the hair as well. So that is the blue gray color all done. And as you can see, it is standing out in a really, really cool fashion. It looks really, really nice. And again, it's very different to the dark color that we used previously. And then just moving on to part 10, which is our final part. And this is gonna be using a sandy blonde color. So this color is a cool color that I used recently to paint the Birkins, um, which is a really cool sort of sandy, sort of blondish grayish color, which really, really does uh, create a very unique and vibrant effect. So we're gonna start by using Sandry Dust, or you could use Khaki if you like. They do practically the same thing, depending on the paint brand that you use. And again, we're just gonna cover all of the hair in this color uh, using nice things paint from there I'm going back to using the soft tone wash soft tone is one of my go-to paints it's one of my go-to washes it has this really sort of nice light brown color it doesn't detract or darken the model too much and it sits perfectly in those recess points as well so I'm just gonna cover all of the hair using this one um, 
just making sure that this sits in all of those recess points without letting it pool too much and we're just going to let it pool where we want so that the certain areas and certain parts of the hair are darker than others once that is dry we're going to move back to the zandri dust and we are going to start to build that color back up and again using the exact same technique that we've used previously uh, without trying to make the video look too samey or be too long i just wanted to try to make sure that we made a lot of these different sort of hairstyles that gave you guys a lot of options a lot of choices uh, sort of a look into a different way of painting hair uh, but also giving you guys a lot of options in terms of the types of hair color that you can paint whether that be for fantasy steampunk sci-fi uh, you know any kind of hair color that you like so it just kind of gives you a bit of a, a mixture of different things and sort of a mixture of different ways in which i paint my hair as well um, so yeah so just using that tip of the brush again like i say picking out uh, all of those different hair strands and as you can see we start to build up uh, the tone and texture once again creating that character through our brush strokes from there we're going to move on to using the light earth from ak interactive this is a great um, sort of step up to the zandri dust so this is a great um, almost like natural and neutral sort of um, highlight towards those khaki colors that you might have in your um, arsenal in your painting arsenal um, and these are uh, as you can see this goes onto the miniature lighter and then sort of dries back down into a great sort of tone um, these tend to have this sort of light sort of color to them and that's what creates this kind of sandy tone so you kind of got this um, sandy khaki sort of base color into this sort of lighter more vibrant creamy sort of earth color um, creating a really really nice effect and texture for hair actually uh, it's not something that you would automatically jump to and say this is going to look great uh, but once you sort of use these colors uh, it actually does look really really cool on your models um, it's something that I've used quite a lot for a few of my fantasy models and it does really look great. It does stand out. So once we've done that, the natural highlight then is using Vampiric Flesh. And again, this time we're going to be a, a lot more careful now where we place this one because this is the more vibrant, uh, lighter sort of highlight. So this is the one layer where we can really pick out the, the the texture and the highlight and those hair strands and really build that character through our brush strokes and i'm saying this a lot building character through brush strokes and that's because a lot of the time with miniature painting a lot of people feel like you have to have the smoothest blend in the world and everything's got to be smoothed down and and sort of blended together in 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 a, a sort of perfect way and that's fine that's, that's completely fine that's up to you if you paint in that sort of way and you enjoy painting in that sort of way that's absolutely fine personally i enjoy having a little bit of character with these brush strokes because it does show that you've spent a lot of time sort of painting each individual part and it sort of shows through in the model as well and everyone paints in a different way so don't worry too much if you can't get all of those smooth blends it's absolutely fine and there you go that is our sandy blonde nice and quick and easy just like so and all in all that is our five sort of sci-fi bright vibrant colors all done as you'll see here if you've stuck right away from the very beginning of the video all the way through i thank you very 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 much because this was a particularly long one to paint a lot of different hairstyles um, i hope this answers the question that was asked and raised in the uh, comment section about how I paint hair and I also like to say thank you so much for all of your patience waiting for me to get this one done I actually found it quite difficult to get the voiceover done because of how long the video was so thank you so much for waiting let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite color and which one you prefer which one you think is the nicest um, and yeah thank you so much for tuning in for watching for commenting uh, for all of your support and for just being all around nice guys we've built a really great community here on this channel and I'd like to keep that going so thank you so much. Uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Take care of yourselves.